Hi, this is Chris Frost, and you're watching Splintered Soul TV. Okay, in this video I'm going to be talking a little bit about the penultimate track on the album called Tabula Rasa. Now Tabula Rasa is basically about the legend of Atlantis and specifically how it was lost. Uh, it's the longest and biggest epic we have at uh, over seven and a half minutes. Quite a lot of orchestration involved, full choirs, uh, I even use the sound of anvils in this, quite a lot of samples as well. Lots of layers of the guitars, violins, etc. For the proggers of, of you out there, lots of different time signatures and keys. Um, but yeah, basically it's just a, a very big uh, sounding track. And I just wanted to take you through some of the things. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you one of the guitar riffs that I use in the bridge section as well. Okay, so what we've got here is the Cubase file for Tabula Rasa. This is pretty much where it was written. And what I mainly use as part of the main compositional process on all of the tracks is Cubase's Arranger track, which basically lets you have uh, the option of trying things out and then trying things out in a different order, a bit like a playlist like you'd have on your iPod. You can try different things in different places until you've jigsaw puzzled ideas around until you are happy with how it sounds. So you may notice lots of the uh, lots of the tracks have been cut up in quite a number of places. Um, some of it's been due to editing but some of it has been due to the fact that I tried different things out with the arranger track until I found something that I preferred. So given that um, the track is written about Atlantis um, I've made the music uh, relatively symbolic of what's going on um, geographically, I suppose, with, um, with the whole story of how it, it ends up disappearing forever, which is pretty much where the title comes from, Tabula Rasa, Wiping the Slate Clean. Um, what we have at the beginning of the track is the eruption of the volcano itself. point the, uh, the tension and the drama starts to build. And so on and so on. It continues to build until the verse comes in. Moving along then, if I take you to the section that we call Live and Let Die by Magma, um, this is basically around where the the land will start to shake with uh, earthquakes etc so we'd represented that this way etc etc. Um, I don't know if you've noticed yet but uh, you wouldn't have heard any vocals because again this is all still at the demo stage um, here in my home where uh, James and I have been composing this over the internet until we got it how we wanted it to be. So uh, if you're listening to this after the album has been released or rather if you've been watching this video after the album has been released then you're going to notice it sounds considerably different. This is still during the compositional stage. Obviously, if you're watching this before the album's released, then you're getting a nice sneak preview of how things are going to be, hopefully. And then, um, moving along then, we've got After the Violin Solo, which pretty much builds up here. 
it kicks into the second bridge, which is what James and I refer to as the tsunami stage. And there we go, so those are the three main stages, obviously at the end is where everything is all pretty much destroyed and gone, and uh, I won't be talking about that in this video. What I will be talking about, however, is the first bridge um, during the earthquake stage. For any of the proggers of you out there, um, it's basically um, E minor with the rhythms of 716 time signature over 4-4. Four, four. So it's got a flow, but it's a bit of a disjointed flow, which goes with the whole earthquake theme. Here we go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to keep tuning in to Splinter Soul Live in the studio.